Good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Prayer. And today <clears throat> it's known as Earth Sunday. And also it's the London Marathon, where in the capital of England, <clears throat> There are 40,000 runners running for all the charities here in the UK, so we wish them well. And it's good to welcome dear Grace to our table of love, and to those who've not logged in, you're welcome. So this morning, we light our light, and we dedicate it for all those today who are running in the London Marathon and also for Earth Sunday. Amen. And now we ring our little bells for unity and peace. <clears throat> and we have a different prayer this morning and it's from Prayers for Peace by the late Cardinal Basil Hume and the late Archbishop Robert Runsey. And the prayer is from an anonymous Muslim. O oh God, I make my complaint unto thee out of my feebleness and the vanity of my wishes. I am insignificant in the sight of men, O oh thou most merciful, God of the weak. Thou art my God, forsake me not. Leave me not a prey to strangers, nor to my enemies. If thou art not offended, I am safe. I seek refuge in the light of thy countenance, by which all darkness is dispelled. And peace cometh in here and hereafter. And there's another beautiful short prayer from an anonymous Muslim. O oh my God, my soul is a ship adrift in the seas of our own will, where there is no shelter from thee save in thee. A point for her, O oh God, in the name of God, her course and its harbour. Amen. Two beautiful prayers on this Earth Sunday. And our hymn this morning, from the Unitarian Hymn Book, Hymns for Living, and our hymn this morning is The Star of Truth by John Andrew Story, 1935. The star of truth but dimly shines behind the veiling clouds of night, but every searching eye divines some partial glimmer of its light. The certainty for which we crave no mortal ones can ever know Uncharted waters we must brave and face whatever winds may blow. Though for safe harbour we may long, we must not let our courage fail. And though the winds of doubt blow strong upon the trackless ocean sail, from honest doubt we shall not flee, nor fetter the inquiring mind. For where the hearts of all are free, a truer faith we there shall find. That's a nice hymn. And now we come <clears throat> to our modern version of the Psalms by the Reverend Leslie Brandt. And Spirit guides my heart to read Psalm 40. I searched long and shouted loud for God. It finally paid off, and he responded. He reached into my pathetic emptiness and planted objective and purpose. Wow. That's powerful. Now I feel like singing. There is genuine meaning for my life. And maybe I can sell I can sell others on this concept of really finding themselves in God. <clears throat> Those who are thoroughly fed up with the fly-by-night objectives of this ephemeral existence, who will look to their creator 
and seek out his will for them. And they also find something to sing about. There is love and concern there, and meaning and purpose far more than one can possibly imagine. <clears throat> Our God is not looking for genius. He does not require great talents. He is not charmed by our panic-ridden activity. He simply asks for our faith and our obedience. It was when I turned from self-seeking to embrace his will for my life that I discovered serenity and security. Thus, I am compelled to express in word and in deed the glad news of God's love and concern to anyone who will listen. And the Lord knows that I've honestly tried to do this. My frailties and my failures are many, but I have not cheated on this score. I have proclaimed the salvation that God offers to all. But my conflicts have not ceased. My sin-permeated nature still plagues me. I still feel overwhelmed at times by my faults and fallibilities. I am disturbed and depressed when others fail to understand or accept me. I need to rely continuously on the grace of God. God grant that all who search for life's meaning may discover such in a relationship of love and trust in him. They shall then know his greatness and proclaim his praises. As for me, foolish and sinful though I am, I know that God will never cease to love me. Oh, that psalm just really moves my heart. But does it move your heart? Despite our failings and our fallibilities, God really does love us. But as the psalmist said, he doesn't want our great talents and gifts and sacrifices on the altars of ego and shouting from the rooftops, hello God, God looks into our heart and what he sees is often beautiful. So all that God is asking from you and me today is that we surrender in obedience and love to his love and put aside all our mistakes all our failings, all that weighs us down, depression, doubt, fear, and trust, because he is a God of love. Right, moving on, we come to this lovely little booklet, <clears throat> United Christian Broadcasts. And I've been having the, these little booklets now for about 35 years. And they really do give you food for thought. So let's see what food the author provides for us on this Earth Sunday and the London Marathon. Show them God's love is the theme. And the author guides us to the Christian Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 7, verse 44. Do you see this woman? Let's read on. <clears throat> Luke writes, Behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her long red hair. She kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, 
This man, if he were a prophet, would not would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. This scene took place in the house of Simon, a religious leader who was more concerned about right and wrong than he was about hurting people. He may have been theologically correct, but he lacked compassion. And Jesus confronted him about it. He turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? And said to Simon, sorry, Simon saw her as a sinner and a loser. But not Jesus. He responded to the gift she brought and to the heart of love behind it. In determining her future potential to God's kingdom, he didn't consult her sordid past or even refer to it. He saw her tears, understood her need, and shocked the religious crowd that day by saying, your sins are forgiven be careful when you've been in church for a while and forgotten what it's like to be on the outside. You can become hard-hearted and fail to show the love of God to those who need it. And the lady in question is Mary Magdalena. <clears throat> and for many centuries the church has portrayed her as a prostitute and a slut. Forgive me for using that word. The early apostles were envious of Magdalena because she was, in Egypt, the high priestess of Isis. She came from the tribe of Benjamin. She was a devout spiritual woman. And in her own right, she was a great spiritual teacher. So the early apostles who didn't have any education, like Peter, they were threatened by her knowledge and her love of Christ. So they made all sorts of accusations against her. And it was nine years ago when the present Pope, so when the last Pope issued an encyclical and had it read by all the bishops of the church to say they got the wrong Mary. Mary Magdalena was not the prostitute. But which Mary was it? There were only three Marys recorded in scripture. Mary the mother of Jesus, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalena. Magdalena has so much to offer us today for she introduces us to the divine feminine energy of God. So let us just be still and ask our heart if we were invited say to a seminar and we noticed a woman of ill repute at that conference from where we where we lived and she was anointing someone's feet what do you think many would be thinking they would be shocked they would be but the lesson here from Jesus is we're all sinners but we must exercise compassion before we enter judgment. We're so good at judging others. And the monastery was no exception. I was introduced to judgments in the monastery where the older monks would judge others or judge the younger monks for not genuflecting properly in chapel or their lack of manners. Today, the virtue that we all need 
is compassion. To show compassion to the downtrodden and not to get involved in judging others. So let us be still and relax and ask ourselves truthfully if we were present with Jesus and witnessed this beautiful young woman washing his feet with her tears and drying them with her long trestles of red hair and then using the most expensive ointment called spikenard on the feet of Christ, how would we respond truthfully? How would we react? Well, let us just come back to our heart and ask ourselves, what would I do? What would I say? Be still. Be still. My dear friends, the Lord God called you by name to come and receive his gift of compassion. So I would like the Lord God to touch your hearts here by inviting you to be still, to relax, 
you may be feeling anxious, maybe weary, or maybe overtired. Whatever you're feeling, whatever your worries are, name them, bless them, and release them to the Christ. And just relax, but be mindful of mindfulness. Be mindful of the stillness where you are and be mindful of God's peace all around you. And as we breathe in, we take a nice, deep, non-labored in-breath and we hold it. And now we release to Christ our heart. The gateway to our soul, the gateway to him. Be still. And just go with the rhythm of your own breathing. And in the stillness, Jesus is calling you to come, to come. He reaches out his hand and you take hold of his hand and you follow him up a narrow street. In Bethany. And as you come into this large room where there's a meeting going on about local issues, the Lord wants you to be still and to witness something of importance for you. And as you relax, you're mindful that you are in the presence of Jesus. And suddenly a young woman comes. She's stunningly beautiful. Her hair is bright red. And it goes all the way down past her waist. And when you get sight of her face, you notice her eyes are so blue and she has the most delicate appearance. And her smile is infectious. But she comes to Jesus and she comes to you. because she wants to anoint your feet. Your feet that walk this sacred earth on this Earth Sunday. Feet that bring the temple of God to those whom you work with, whom you meet, who may be downtrodden, anxious, fear-driven, so Magdalena wants to anoint your feet, but first the Lord gives her a bowl of tepid water and she bathes your feet with tenderness, with love. And each touch of her hand to your feet reawakens within you that you've been called by God for a specific purpose. What is that purpose? And if you're unsure, you need to ask the Lord, what is my life's purpose, Lord? And now Mary dries your feet with her hair. And you feel so humbled 
that this beautiful young woman should do this for you. What are you feeling in your heart? What are you sensing? And now Magdalena reaches for her, her beautiful jar of spikenard, the most expensive ointment in Jerusalem, even to today. And she takes her hands with the ointment and she lifts them to Christ. And she asks Jesus to bless her hands and the, and the ointment. And suddenly her hands are infused with the love of Christ. And lifting up your feet, resting on her knees, she begins to apply the spike knife. Gently, she maneuvers her hands around each foot. And you can sense God's love through her touch. And each gentle stroke of her hands, she's releasing her love for you into your mind your body and spirit, but she's also bringing to you Christ's love, the love of your beloved. And as Mary continues to do this for you, you are taken to a place of beauty. You are taken to the tabernacle of God wherein you see the Ark of the Covenant and the archangels around the Covenant singing the praises of God. And behind them, <clears throat> there are 12 archangel princes using incense boats. They are incensing God in the tabernacle of love. And behind them, there's a myriad of angels. And they are singing God's praises for you. For you. Because you came here this morning to allow the Lord your God touch you in your mind in your aching body and in your weary spirit. The angels of the Lord God are praising God for your perseverance, for your commitment and for your gift of compassion for the children of God who are suffering and struggling where you live. And the sounds of the choirs of angels is something you will never forget. And the light is so intense, you can barely see the Ark of the Covenant. But you can make out Mother Mary and Saint John, the beloved disciple and all the apostles and disciples over the last 2000 years are all behind the Ark of the Covenant. And right next to you are your loved ones and all your beautiful pets who've crossed over. They are beside you now. And they're singing like you've never heard them sing before. The little dogs and cats are meowing and barking with joy and the birds are tweeting. All of creation is celebrating this Earth Sunday, God's gift to each one of us. 
And now that Magdalena has finished, <clears throat> she bends down and she kisses your feet. and she wraps them in a towel and you sit in the presence of God totally relaxed <clears throat> and where all fear has gone and there's a burning flame that's been ignited in your heart where you say come Lord Jesus come into my life Lead me, lead me, guide me, protect me. And the Lord reaches out for your hands and he just utters these words, well done, good and faithful servant. For what I have asked you to do you have gone above and beyond the call of duty. You have honored your heart. You have listened to my voice and you are following my voice. Bring compassion, my compassion to the world and avoid sitting in judgment on the children of God who have fallen by the wayside, pick them up, pick them up with your smile and your words of love. Now relax, be still. And as you open your eyes, though Jesus and Magdalena are not there, there is something that is there and it is the beautiful fragrance of incense and the beautiful aroma from the spikenard oil and as you look down at your feet you see the towel wrapped round your feet a gift from Magdalena to you in recognition of what you do for the Most High God as God's ambassadors for unity and peace. We bring each one of you here and we thank the Lord Christ for blessing you and your intentions. And we pray for this sacred world today on Earth Sunday, that the children of God will take more care of this sacred earth instead of abusing her and destroying it. So we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here, dear Lord, our daily bread. Forgive us the times we've sat in judgment on your children, for the times we've lacked compassion, for the times we gave up the ghost and walked away from your love. For the times we've allowed our head, our ego, take away your peace for choosing the easy option. Protect us, dear Lord, from the force of evil and from the antics of the Antichrist. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. <clears throat> and our closing prayer, bear with me a second. Oh, it's here. It's from the book Prayers for Peace. 
and this is from St. Augustine of Hippo. Can any praise be worthy of the Lord's majesty? How magnificent his strength, how inscrutable his wisdom. Man is one of your creatures, Lord, and his instinct is to praise you. The thought of you stirs him so deeply that he cannot be content unless he praises you because you made us for yourself and our hearts find no peace until they rest in you. Wow. Father, Mother, God, we ask you today to bless <clears throat> each one of us here as we commemorate the Cathedral of God on Earth Sunday. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for reawakening within us that you do offer us hope, compassion and love. Thank you, Lord, for touching each one of us here and for answering all our requests. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum om shanti. Solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace from the Son of Peace become your peace. I wish, if it's your bedtime, I wish you the pleasure of a second sleep, but if you're beginning your day, I pray it will be a beautiful day. But remember, today is Global Earth Sunday. Do something beautiful for the sacred earth. Go and hug a tree. <laughs>